This video explains how to create address labels using Microsoft Word. So we're going to start our holiday label lesson off with return address labels. So we're going to go over to the mailings tab and on the left side of the ribbon we're going to choose labels. On the labels tab of this dialog box you're going to type in your name and address. You're going to choose full page of the same label. We're going to go and tell it what kind of labels that we have. So pull out that box of labels and through the options button, we're just going to find the labels in here. So to make it easier to find your labels, um, probably a good idea to set the label vendor to Avery US letter. And then what you're going to do is just find the number that matches your box of labels. So I have 5160. They're right here. I'm going to click on it, click on OK. And then what I want to do is create um, a new document uh, that contains all of these address labels, return address labels. So I'm going to click new document. And there we go. Um, if I want them, uh, uh, so obviously, um, you know, this will print just fine onto my address label sheet. But maybe I want to make it a little bit more festive. And a couple ways that I can do that is to change the fonts, the font colors, and maybe even add um, a little graphic in there. So I'm going to select everything. Control A will select everything, uh, all the font uh, and all the text uh, that is on your um, label. And on the home tab of the ribbon, I'm going to change the font um, to something like this. Uh, and, and you can choose, obviously, whatever you want. Uh, some of you may actually have some holiday fonts out there. I think there was one called Candy Cane or something like that. Um, but I'm just going to go with this, uh, a little bit of a calligraphy look and feel to it. Maybe you want to change the font colors and sizes. Of course, you can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, a red font there, red text. And now um, I'm going to incorporate a picture. So the pictures take a little bit of work, um, but uh, it is definitely a, a nice touch to the label, makes it stand out. If you don't want a picture, then that's fine, but let's show you just in case you do. So on the, you put your cursor where you want that picture to go roughly, and on the insert tab of the ribbon, you can go to online pictures. I'm going to do a Bing image search um, for happy holidays and pick one of the creative common options that it gives me maybe something like this i think and i just want the one picture i'm going to insert it okay so obviously still have a little bit of work to do here um, what i want to do is use the lower right corner drag in towards the center of that picture to make it a little bit smaller and then another thing I need to do while that picture is selected, make sure that picture is selected. There are contextual tabs that will show up on the right side of the ribbon. I'm going to go into the picture tools format and I want to wrap the text. Um, I'm just going to wrap it tight. Um, and what that means is that the picture um, and the text will be um, situated close together. As I, if I want to at this point make that a little bit bigger, I can. And then if I would like that same picture with the same settings in any of my other address labels, then I can just hold down my control key and click and drag um, to make a copy of that picture. And maybe you want different pictures in each of your different rows. That's fine as well. Um, there is no magic button to make it happen in each of those uh, uh, labels. You would have to copy them. Um, but that's one way to make your return address labels. Save it, print it, um, and you have your, like we said, return address labels for the holidays. Now for our recipients labels, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a mail merge and in the mail merge process, what happens is we create a separate database of names that we can reuse for other label projects that we may have. Think about invitations and thank yous and other things that we do, um, you know, throughout the course of the year. 
Um, so, so what we're going to do is we are going to save that group of names in, in a separate file, and we're going to merge those names into our label format. Sounds complicated, but it's not. You put a little bit of work into it um, as you get started with this project, and then you can sort of reap the benefits and use those addresses over and over again for your, your various projects there. So um, in order to do this, we are going to go over to the Mailings tab, and we're going to do Start Mail Merge. We are going to do Labels. And once again, um, the label vendor should be set to Avery U.S. Letter. And you're going to select the label type that you're going to be using for this particular project. And it can vary. Um, uh, like we said, the, the list that we're creating can be used in all different kinds of projects. So um, what we're picking now is the label type that we're creating um, for this, this little exercise here. So 5160, I'm going to click on OK. And it sort of lays this out. And by the way, if for whatever reason you don't see these grid lines, these grid lines don't print. Um, but they just show you visually where one label, you know, the outline of each label. So um, if you are missing that, then it is just a setting. And you can get to it on the right side of the ribbon. You're going to have new uh, tabs underneath table tools. You're going into design, whoop, excuse me, layout and it's the view grid lines button so if that is not um, selected or turned on then you're not going to see the outline around your labels so just um, be on the lookout for that it's a common problem usually once you turn it on it stays on um, but if yours is missing you can get it under table tools layout and just turn on view grid lines all right back to the mailings tab um, we did the, we indicated that we're starting to mail merge with the label project. Now I need to select the recipients. This is the first time through, so I'm going to be typing a new list. And it gives me a number of columns. I, I only see some of them here. So there's a scroll bar at the bottom that I can use to scroll across and see the rest of them. And it could be um, that you want all of these fields, and it could be that you want to get rid of some and add some of your own. In order to tweak uh, the columns that you see here, then uh, what you're going to do is go to Customize Columns. These columns are the labels that will tell you what information goes into what cell here. So let me go to Customize Columns. And the first thing I'm going to do is individually delete the columns that I don't need. So um, maybe I don't need things like title. So you select it. And then what you do is choose the delete button over to the right and yes to confirm it. Um, and, and feel free uh, to keep this these fields, right? And maybe even add more um, if you wanted to. Just use the add button. Type in a name for your field, um, whatever that may be. <laughs> and um, I, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. But it would be if you want to add anything that isn't there initially. Um, okay, so I'm just doing address labels. I do not need phone numbers and email addresses here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those as well. Uh, unfortunately, you have to select them one at a time and get rid of them. A lot of clicks just to get rid of things that you don't need. All of my recipients are in the United States, so I can delete the country or region there. Okay. Then what I'm going to be able to do is click on OK. It will adjust this. And now I have those column headers. And if at any point I want to add more or change them, I can go back into Customize Columns. And I have the first row that I can populate with the name of the, uh, the name and address information of my first recipient. So first name, I'm pressing the Tab key to go into the Last Name field. I'm pressing the Tab key to go into Address Line 1. Address line two would be something like the apartment. Uh, and then the city, the state, and the zip. Oops. Okay. To add an additional um, recipient, then what I will do is click new entry or just press the tab key on my keyboard. It'll come around now to row two. 
So I'm just going to pause the video for a minute um, and populate a few more names in here, and then we'll move on with our project. Okay, so we've gone ahead and populated a few more names on our list, and what we're ready to do now is move on. And we could always come back into this dialog box and add names or remove names. Let's change names, and we'll show you that in, in just a moment. So what I'm going to do right now is click on OK, and these addresses and name information will go into a separate file that I can put anywhere on my computer and use um, uh, again and again as needed. So um, as I click on OK, it's going to ask me to save that. And I'm going to save that right to my desktop. I'm going to call it um, Cisco Labels and click on Save. And again, this is just the data, um, to be honest with you. So it is going to um, uh, be something that I can use over and over again. Now, if I go back to the mailings tab and I want to add more names, um, you know, change names, etc., then I can certainly do that. There will be a button here called Edit Recipient List, and um, I can find it here. I can't edit in this area, though. What I have to do is select the data source from the list down below and choose Edit, and I'll be back in here and I can add additional names. Um, just by choosing new entry, I can make changes to existing um, names and addresses. Maybe this should be 12M, um, what, whatever the case may be. And then all I need to do is click on OK. Do you want to update the recipient list? Yes. And OK. And then I am able to, then those, ch those uh, changes have been saved. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to lay out um, the mapping where I would like the information from my, my list of names to display. And you just have to do this once in the first label of your sheet. So on the mailings tab with my cursor in that first cell of the table there, I, I, can, I can really fast track this exercise by choosing address block. And what that will do is just bring up a standard format um, for my labels. So um, this will show you what that format will look like. If that's OK with you, you can just click on OK. And it will go ahead and place a code in there called address block. If you would like to see a little more detail about that, then on the mailings tab, you can choose preview results and then you'll be able to see what's going on there. One thing that is going on there, and I can fix that in just a little bit, is that the spacing between those items there um, is, is a little bit too much, right? Um, and uh, we will correct that in just a little bit, but you can at least start to see uh, where the information and how the information will display on that label. So I'm gonna turn that off for a sec. So again, like we said, you only need to um, lay out the address block field in that first label. And then what you would do is come over and say update labels. And that will put whatever code um, or whatever fields you placed into that initial cell into all the rest of them. Okay. And again, if you wanted to, you can choose preview results and that's what you're going to end up looking like. Okay. Okay. We are not quite done yet though. Um, so to finish this, we can come over to the right side of the ribbon, choose finish and merge, edit individual documents. And I want a label for each of my recipients. So I'll keep that selected. Clicking on okay. It will go ahead and produce, um, the labels. And um, if there was more than one page, it would, it would go on and have multiple pages. I just have, look down in the bottom left, um, if you will, here. I just have one page, but uh, if you had more recipients, then obviously you'd have multiple pages in here. So just to, to get these to fit a little bit better, 
Um, you can select the text that's in there. This happens to be a spacing problem. So on the home tab of the ribbon, I'm going into the paragraph settings and I'm just going to change the space before to zero. That's what's causing that um, little issue there. So I'll click on OK. And then what will end up happening is the, the, the text is a little bit closer together and it will go ahead and fit a little bit better on my label. So uh, just like we saw earlier, you can change the fonts, you can add pictures, etc. cetera. Um, so uh, feel free to apply any of those um, steps that we did with the address labels, the return address labels here for your project. This is a separate file, so you should probably save this, uh, print it to those um, label sheets that you have, and you will be all ready for the holidays. Also, if you're starting off a, a label project, maybe take a look at some of the templates that have already been created, readily available inside of Word to maybe cut down on your efforts, right? Um, so I can get to those templates by going into File, New. There'll be some templates that are here. You can search for what you're looking for. So I'm gonna say Holiday Label. And there are gift labels, address labels, et cetera, that you can choose from. You can um, select the one that you want to use, create, and the layout is all there, the graphics are there, um, so you wouldn't have to add any of that manually. There's text here that you can just replace. Um, Okay, and what you would then do is maybe copy and paste. So I'm selecting that text. I'm gonna do Control C or right click copy. And then I'm gonna select the um, sample text and do a paste or Control V. Um, and I would just need to do that each time. Um, if it is a case where you're doing your recipients addresses and you didn't go through the whole mail merge process, then you can just replace this with um, one recipient at a time. So hopefully this gives you a, a little bit of an idea um, of how you can make your own custom labels, whether they're return address or recipient labels, and you'll be, like we said, all ready for the holidays. And that's all for today. Thanks and hope to see you again soon.